guys, I'm Melissa and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you are having an amazing day so far. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you every single thing that I eat as a vegan who follows a low calorie density way of eating. Now, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and also follow the playlist entitled Weight Loss so that you're notified of my future uploads on this channel and you won't miss a video. All right, I am excited to let you know that I have created a free download that I think is gonna be a really helpful resource for anyone trying to get an understanding of which foods are low calorie density, which ones aren't, and just getting a grasp on the calories per pound concept. So basically I've created a spreadsheet that has the calories per pound of almost every plant food. So you can get that for free at melissaalexandria.com and you can download it. I recommend printing it out and maybe taking it with you when you're at the grocery store so that you can make sure that you have what you need in order to prepare some really great filling and tasty low calorie density meals for your week. My smoothie this morning is going to be frozen bananas, frozen peaches, a handful of dark leafy greens, half a cup of soy milk, and I am gonna go get some cinnamon out of the cupboard because it's just not a delicious smoothie in my opinion unless there's lots of cinnamon in there. And I'm gonna add in a couple of handfuls of frozen peaches. Twelve ounces of water and lots of cinnamon. Let's blend this up. And here we go, nice and creamy and super healthy. Alright, for lunch we've got a really filling dish that I'm a huge fan of and I will put the recipe for this up on melissaalexandria.com which will be linked in the description box of this video and I'm calling it an easy tofu black bean delight. It is super, super flavorful. The sriracha is optional. Obviously, if you are not a fan of spice, then you can leave that out. And this is a dish that is high protein. So for those of you who are concerned about getting enough protein on a plant-based diet, the black beans and the tofu are both very high protein. And optionally, you can serve this on a bed of rice. So if you have some leftover rice, this could be great with that. Or if you want to get some greens in, you could also serve this on a bed of chopped up dark leafy greens. I've diced up the entire yellow onion and I've got it in a quite a large pan because I'm going to add all of the ingredients into this pan eventually. But we want to saute the onions in a bit of water. And we're gonna leave them there for about five minutes on medium heat until they're translucent. And as you can see, I've diced them up into very, very, very small pieces. And while these are sauteing, I'm going to wash my two medium-sized russet potatoes quite well and start dicing them up into small pieces as well. All right, now we're going to add in the potatoes. and two cups of water. And we just wanna make sure that the potatoes are spread out and that they're all covered by water. All right, I'm gonna add in the half a teaspoon of ground cumin and the entire teaspoon of garlic powder. We're gonna leave this on the stove top in between medium and high heat for 15 to 20 minutes until the potatoes are soft and most of the water has evaporated. It is smelling really good. This is what it looks like after 15 minutes. And I'm gonna leave it on medium now for another 10 minutes. I'm just gonna set my timer for that. 
Now I'm going to open up this pack of tofu and I'm gonna drain the water out and take half of the tofu out of the package and on my cutting board, I'm gonna dice it into about one centimeter sized chunks. And then I'm gonna open up this can of black beans, rinse them out, and I'm gonna put half of them into a glass container to use another time. And we're gonna use half of this container in this dish that we're making now. So half of the tofu and half of the can of black beans rinsed. Okay, now we are ready to add in the tofu chunks and the black beans. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just move the potatoes and onions over to one side of the pan, because we're gonna make this a one pan dish. And we're gonna add our tofu in. Great. And half of the rinsed can of black beans to that side as well. And the pan is still on medium heat. Just wanna spread everything out as much as you can. That's why a large pan is ideal for this dish. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our soy sauce and we're gonna be adding three tablespoons. And we're gonna kinda concentrate it mostly on the tofu because we want the tofu to absorb the flavor Tofu is essentially tasteless, so whatever flavor you add to it, that's what it tastes like. Now, there's our third tablespoon. So we've got three tablespoons of soy sauce. Now we are gonna add in three tablespoons of lemon juice. And lastly, we're gonna add in a generous drizzle of sriracha. Now you can skip this step if you don't like spice. And since the black beans and tofu don't really need to be cooked, they just really need to get that flavor all over them and to be warmed up. And we're gonna kind of mix it all in together here. You wanna make sure that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. So you may need to lower the heat a tiny bit and just make sure that you stir occasionally during that five minutes. So I'm gonna set my five minute timer now. All right, so I'm just going to take a big handful of this organic salad mix and I'm actually gonna cut it up really small. I like to cut my salad up into small pieces and I'm going to have this with my dish that I've just made. And the recipe that we just made is enough for four servings. All right, time to eat. As a quick snack, I am going to slice up two navel oranges. All right, for dinner, I am going to make a smoky sweet potato lentil cabbage soup. Now, this is definitely a low calorie density meal. Many of you have been asking me to make meals that are what I would have eaten when I first started this way of eating. So when I first was losing my weight, I wasn't eating any pasta. I kind of added that in after. Same with avocado and the little bit of fruit jam that I eat now. So this is a meal that is 100% low calorie density. Everything in here is under 700 calories per pound. And cabbage is extremely low. It's something like 118 calories per pound. Celery is also very low. Um, you do have the lentils in there, which provide a great source of protein in this meal. And it's coming up fall here in North America. And I think this is just a really nice, warming, delicious, hearty soup. I have peeled and diced up my onion and now I've just put it in a large soup pot with a splash of water. I'm just gonna break apart the pieces. 
and I'm going to let it saute for five minutes until it's translucent before adding in my chopped veggies and the water. All right, so this is actually quite a small cabbage. I know it might be hard to tell the scale in this video, but here's a carrot and the cabbage is actually quite tiny. So I am going to use the entire cabbage. If you have a large cabbage, you can use half or three quarters of one. Um, I've removed the core and I am just going to shred this up into quite small pieces. All right, now I'm going to wash and chop up three carrots, two stalks of celery, and one large sweet potato with the skin on. All right, our vegetables are all chopped up and now we're gonna add them to the pot. Adding in the cabbage. guys so I majorly underestimated how big the vegetables would be when I've diced them all up so they didn't really fit in that pot that I was using so this is the largest pot that I have um, use the biggest soup pot you have at home I don't know the size offhand but I will find out for you and I'll put it in the description box of this video as well as on the recipe info um, on my website. So we've got all our veggies in there now and in total we have 12 cups of water. Now this is going to make soup for the week or soup for a large family so it's, if you like cooking once and having food to eat all week then this is your go-to recipe. And I've got the soup on medium to high. I'm just going to put the lid on and let it do its thing. I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes and then I'm going to come back and take a look at it and see if it's time for us to add in our frozen corn and lentils. All right, it's been 20 minutes and our soup is looking good. I am going to add in one tablespoon of paprika. If you have smoked paprika, this would work as well. I just don't happen to have any at the moment. And now I'm gonna add in 20 drops approximately of liquid smoke. Now liquid smoke is not everyone's cup of tea. I love a smoky hickory flavor. So that's why I've chosen to add it to this soup. You can choose to leave that out of your soup and instead you can add a teaspoon of cumin or a teaspoon of curry powder or both, that would be quite nice. But we're gonna make this a smoky flavored soup, so the liquid smoke is perfect. And we've got one cup of frozen corn. And an entire rinsed can of lentils. Okay, I'm gonna give this a really good stir. And I'm going to leave the lid off now and set my timer for 10 minutes. And the soup is on medium high. All right, so now I'm going to transfer six cups of this soup into my blender, which is the max that fits into my blender. And, oops. and I'm going to blend it up really well and then transfer it back to the rest of the soup. All right, I've just blended it up. Voila, there we go. And now I'm just gonna add some ground black pepper. And a bit of sea salt. And the recipe for this will be up at melissaalexandria.com, which is gonna be linked in the description box of this video.
As a treat, I am going to make a bowl of oatmeal with some frozen blackberries, a splash of unsweetened soy milk, some stevia to sweeten it, and lots of cinnamon because I just love cinnamon in pretty much everything. And I'm going to use one rounded cup of dry oats. When I make my big, big bowls of oatmeal, I use two of these, but right now I'm just going to be using one cup. And many of you have been asking me how to make oatmeal that doesn't come out mushy. Uh, and basically what I do is I make sure that the water is completely bubbling and boiling in the pot before adding in the oats. If you add the oats in before the water is really, really hot and boiling, then the oatmeal comes out creamy and almost mushy. Some people actually like it that way, but, but personally, I do not. All right, I'm gonna put the blackberries in the bottom. They're frozen, so when I put the hot oatmeal on top, it'll kind of melt them a little bit. The stevia is very concentrated, so I'm just putting a tiny little bit. That's enough to make the whole bowl sweet. And lots of cinnamon as per usual, and soy milk. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your support of my channel so, so much. And be sure to find me on Instagram as well because I do share content throughout the week meals that I'm eating. If I do happen to be dining out, I show you what I order and also lots of encouragement and motivation throughout the week. So I'm at Melissa Alexandria 01 on Instagram and I'll see you there. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.